Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to the Woolly Mammoth parking lot. That means, yes, another hogback challenge. Man, we have really come up with some silly names for this. Uh, the Woolly Mammoth parking lot is, that's named by Colorado. We have called this the hogback challenge, which is our driver assistance challenge. This is the BMW i4 M50 and I'm standing here to kind of block this area from you so you don't have to see it. So just ignore this. Let's go around the back real quickly so you don't have to look up there. Actually though, in person, the styling's really growing on me. The car, stellar vehicle. Vehicle. This thing rocks. Now we've already reviewed this exact car. Jordan had it for a bit, but I asked for it back because I didn't get to drive it. I really wanted to shred it up some canyons. And I think since we've had this, we've developed the Hogback Challenge. And so we're going to be testing the driver assistance system on the BMW i4. So I'll walk you through the sensors, a little bit of the car, and then Timon, Jordan, and myself are gonna jump in, we're gonna score it, and see how well its driver assistance does on our stretch of road here. It's the beginning of I-70. I wanna say 50 corners. It's a pretty, really crazy test. Big elevation change, traffic. We got a lot to talk about, but um, man, from back here, does this thing not look incredible? I absolutely love it. This is the sportiest uh, way you can option. Ooh, Mamba Green Macan over there. This is the sportiest way you can option a BMW i4 with the 20 inch wheels uh, and it's the M50 version, which means it's like the M Sport. It's not a true M car, but this actually makes more horsepower than the M4 does, even the M4 X drive, which makes more power than the rear wheel drive. So BMW was like, we'll make the fast one electric and more reviews coming and everything. We've already done like a little first taste, but very silent electric motors. The drivetrain is so world-class. The handling is better than the combustion 440i, which I also loved. And I just think people are sleeping on this car. I own a Tesla Model 3 Performance. We're keeping it news. We're not selling it. And this is that car's direct competitor. Slightly more expensive, but wow, is it another step above the Tesla in so many ways. In other ways, the Tesla is a step above. Uh, so that brings me to price, $65,900 base. This one has the high performance package with M technology package. <laughs> the, the wording here is really funny and it's got the big wheels. But what we're focused on is the driver assistance pro package. The reason I have this piece of paper here is because how can you remember all of this? $1,700 gets you extended traffic jam assistant, which I'm pretty sure actually uses eye tracking. We'll talk about that inside. And it gives you active driving assistant pro so lane centering and capacitive steering wheel and all of that stuff. Um, more reviews coming. I want to give you a little tidbit though. BMW uh, were the leaders in electrification, or I would say at least among the German automakers when the i3 launched. It was one of the most efficient vehicles, great material sciences. And then they like went radio silence on EVs and totally forgot. And I think left them for worse because now they're just trying to play catch up. But honestly, if they're trying to play catch up with this package, this is a good product. Same with the iX, another great product. For example, take a look at this charging port situation. The AC charging, all you do is you pull this little flap, boom, DC, pull that little flap. And unlike some other cars that have this, you can close just the top one and you can see there's a little catch here in their design and you can close it all, boom, just like that. BMW gets it and it's just, awesome very high voltage in the 400 volt class so it's like 450 full uh, so very similar to rivian in that regards if you're not going to go 800 volt class of ev go high 400s they did and i'll make a whole video as to why maybe enough rambling because i could talk all day about how amazing this car is and i think i'll make a video about how much i have truly loved this car you guys know me i have no problem trashing a car when it's bad and i'll tell you they messed up on the grill for sure they just should not have taken that design approach but the car is, this might be the best BMW on sale. And I, I mean, we've driven them all. I love them. I'm a BMW guy, right? But I feel like they've gotten soft. This is bringing back the love of BMW for me. This video is brought to you by Currently. 
Save time by skipping the wait at a charging station. Currently delivers charging to your car, your home, the office, wherever you want it. Download the app and use promo code out of spec and get 30 days of free charging delivery. Welcome to the inside of the i4. Jordan and Tymon join me. And before we get into the scoring system, let's explain a little bit about the test. Uh, this is an objective and subjective review where we score the car uh, based on a list of criteria and how it performs during the test. But keep in mind, it cannot be repeatable or scientific really because traffic conditions to change and we can't shut down the road and hire a group of cars to drive <laughs> all in the same place at the same time. So we run this stretch of road again, 50 miles, no 50 corners. How many miles is it? It's 30 miles total. 30 miles total. Yeah. About 1500 feet of elevation total gain. It's actually more because you do some up and downhill. So start here at about 6,500 feet, go up to 8,000 feet. Yep. Fair amount of traffic. Like you said, um, there's a lot going on, which is why we put the cars through this test because it's, it's the ringer. So yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's honestly we're doing the only in, you know uh, independent driver assistance testing on YouTube at the moment, uh, so we're the best at it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Correct us if you're wrong. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's go through the scoring system of how this car starts out. Just like every car we've run in the hogback, there will be a link in the description linking you to a table. I think we'll actually be working on this table soon yep. where we can kind of rank the cars in an easier to view format. Uh, what else should we talk about? This is the car has an opportunity to earn points at the beginning of every test based off of things like capacitive steering wheels so it can start out with positive or negative points and then it, we deduct points as we drive which Jordan will explain this whole process because yeah. you kind of created this. This is the objective portion where we assign points based on what it has. For example, we'll start out with kind of the driver interface. It has a capacitive wheel right very capacitive Which and awesome. very light touch yeah that's, that's great super good uh, and then driver safety eye tracking which is not always active, I guess, but. Well, we've never <laughs> been able to get the car in a situation where it is active, but BMW tells us that it will do eye tracking and stop and go. And we've also seen the uh, infrared uh, dots pop up here. So it has the tech where it's used for, we're not totally sure. Yep. So I almost feel like we shouldn't give it the points, but we're gonna give it the points. Yeah, um, but there's no hands-free eye tracking. It doesn't have like blue cruise or anything like that. No. Um, and the gauge cluster does not show cars around. It shows your car, right? but no other you know, virtualization of what's happening. That's true, but we actually just got a software update for this. It okay. does over the air software yep. updates. So we'll see if anything has changed. Yeah, but as of right now, and we'll change it of course. Yeah. Um, automatic functions. So it will adapt to speed limits, correct? It will adapt to speed limits. So I'm just coming here to driving settings under driver assistance. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And if we go to safety and warnings, there's forward collision warning, lane departure with steering, um, speed warning. Okay, so there's one parking and maneuvering driving. Here's what we want assisted driving, automatic lane change, and speed limit assistance. I can say speed limits, show current limit, and then adjust to route. Only possible with active cruise control under certain conditions. What does that mean? We, certain conditions. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know. We'll find out if it dips to our speed or not, yep. but at least it shows that it will, it has speed limit assistance. Any sort of adaptive system aggressiveness that you can tell? Yeah, so BMWs do have ap uh, active system aggressiveness, which means when you put it in sport mode, it drives like a true BMW driver. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, no automatic lane changing or anything no, like that? No, it does. Oh, it does? I just said it. Oh. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> it does do automatic lane changing. Uh, you just hit the turn signal and whoop. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting all my cars mixed up. Um, but you need a user input, doesn't return to the lane, so. Right, it's not uh, automatic in the sense that it will. It's not self-driving. Right, <laughs> doesn't have anything like yep. that. But you just hit the turn signal and it goes. I mean, you would think that's really the only use case for a turn signal in this yeah, car. Yeah, exactly. Funny story, BMW USA, the Twitter account, yep. just tweeted out today, user turn signals. That, well, some people need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have a situation where what if the driver is unresponsive? We want to know what the actual car will do if you're using some sort of ADAS system and just fall asleep or some medical emergency happens. So let's jump to that right now. Okay, so let's get it on the system now. Assisted driving mode set. We'll go 40 miles an hour. And again, just going to see what the car does. Full screen car play, by the way. 
as Lexi's messaging you. <laughs> okay, so our first warning is put your hands on the wheel. I have it in the head-up display, I have it in the instrument cluster here, and these wonderful lights on the steering wheel. Love that feature of BMWs. They really try and get your attention. Ooh, and a nice bass tone to that noise. Everything's red. Ooh, braking. Vehicle is stopping. Whoa, hard brakes. Volvo behind us, hard brakes. We're gonna redo this. We're gonna see what happens when it comes to the end. So let's get traffic out of the way and try again. So it really does not let you go very hard, far. Slamming on the brakes. Coming to a stop feels like. And stop, hazards on, stays in gear. And then we just can launch it out of here. Hazards off. Wow, that was probably the shortest amount of time for a car to come to a stop. Hazards on, no seatbelt pulse, but the noises were good because there was high pitch tones, low tones. I think the steering wheel was vibrating, which is weird because it's capacitive, so it should know your hands aren't on it. But overall, that's pretty impressive. I'm glad it brings you to a stop and puts the hazards on. So that was decent. Um, it didn't give you a whole lot of time, as you said. But I think that's the right way to do it. Some of these systems will let us drive for like a minute or two before they do anything. Some just give up. This did everything correctly, I thought. It yeah. came to a stop, it put the hazards on, arguably a bit too late. I would have them come, come yeah. on a bit earlier. And, and it didn't go into park, which I actually think is smart. Mm -hmm. Because if you happen to wake up in that situation, you're like, oh, I need to like throttle out. Uh, better than having to fumble with a shifter, you can just nail the throttle. Yeah. So think uh, BMW really thought that one through quite well. Yeah, it was a good job. Uh, didn't do any seatbelt yanking or seat shaking or exterior horn, none of those right. things. Um, but could have could have done a bit better there. Yeah, but this is one of the first ones we've tested that does hazard lights, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's really it for the the early points. Now we deduct points. <laughs> right. Yep. Based so on the drive. explain how that works. Yeah, so on this drive through our treacherous route, uh, we deduct a point every time Kyle has to take over for safety. So if the car, you know, the car is trying to do all this by itself, but if he has to take over because it's veering over a lane, we'll deduct a point there. Yeah, if it touches a line, we'd take a point off. Yep. If the car auto disengages the system, but warns you, it's letting you know, hey, I can't make this turn or something. Um, we'll this thing rips, by the way. <laughs> we'll deduct two points. <laughs> and then um, if it disengages with no warning, that's minus three. So we'll count the number of times that happens and see how it does. I don't know what to expect because you used this car on earlier software and said it was terrible. Yeah. And then I used it driving to do this test today and thought it was incredible. Yeah, I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, so I, I think BMW has been working on it. Um, that is the cool thing about, you know, legacy-ish, what do you want to call them, existing automakers getting software update over the air capability. They're like, oh, all the new things you can do. And uh, I would say this, this has a lot of it. It's 88 degrees outside. It's uh, kind of getting a little bit busy traffic wise. So we're just kind of ripping out here and it's going to be a tough challenge for this system. I agree, but you're right about the software updates. The car you buy isn't necessarily the car you'll always have because you get new features and new improvements. And Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. I, I drive, makes you drive like a BMW yeah, yeah, driver. <laughs> we need this Subaru to go absolutely wide open throttle to have any chance I of hitting the speed is. limit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we need to do is get ourselves positioned. I got the system assisted driving mode turned on. We normally have it on at the speed limit right here at the sign. We're set, but we are getting a little bit clogged up behind this car. It has not engaged yet, waiting for it. Sometimes they don't like to engage right until the corner. And... Oh, not off to a good start. We are riding that left edge. Yeah. And we are even under the speed limit right now. Yeah, but so auto lane change? Yes. And it does show other cars around on the display. It now. does show other cars on the display. Excellent. Wow, updates. And it does a really good job. They're all 7 Series. <laughs> <laughs> in a perfect world. It, it works if you live in like a ritzy area of New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. But anywhere else, this is not accurate. Yeah, this is not I-70. <laughs> um, extremely quiet in here yeah the motors are dead silent the car is built so well yeah you have the Hans Zimmer sound turned off which is, I turned all that yes. stuff off <laughs> <laughs> you want to explain what that is yeah so Hans Zimmer developed the sounds for this car because some electric cars will try to copy I don't know combustion in some way or just do something and they were like oh we'll just go to Hans Zimmer he makes sounds and <laughs> he does and I do think it's interesting you and liked I, it I like it 
uh, but I also like to turn it off. So, you know, I wish there was just an immediate button that was like on off instead of going into the menu. Oh, today. you know what does have that? The Toyota Mirai. Oh. It has a button by your left knee which will turn on and off the fake sound. That's Except nice. Except it's not done by Hans Zimmer and it's really bad. It is bad. I hated that sound. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that truck's kind of going the speed limit. So right turn signal and it just likes to feel your hands on the wheel a little bit. The lane changes are perfection. Really good. It does depict it as a truck now. It's seven, seven, oh yeah, that's good. right. It knows that it's a truck. Not the right Look at this thing. It's doing well. Yeah. So some of these cars really struggle in the corners. Um, this one seems to be well to be bumpy. So I guess the corners are its natural. Why are we breaking? <laughs> I don't know what's going. That guy. It's just a trailer with no one on it. <laughs> oh, there's a truck up here. I see. So left turn signal. Oh, so he's just trying to pass this truck up ahead. This is the hard part of this test. Is there's traffic. There's trucks. There's things going on. And um, it's real life testing. Is I mean, it's is. as extreme as you could imagine. Yep. Because there's crazy traffic. You get half the people in Colorado driving 120 miles an hour. The other half can't have enough acceleration to get up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> and we're kind of having to navigate it at the speed limit because we drive the speed limit for this. Yeah. I should point out we have all these objective points, but we also have some subjective points we will assign because again, this is a review of sorts. We're reviewing the system. We want to tell you what you might want to know if you were to buy this car. So if we find something that's unique about it, we may award it points or take it away. It just depends how severe it is. Let's see what it does here in the wide lane section. Is it going to think it's two lanes? No, it seems to be So reading. far, and it even lane changed right into the perfect spot. That's pretty good. Wow. So does this feel better than when you first reviewed this car? Yes. When I first reviewed it, I was a bit concerned. It, it did okay, but it just like, it did not feel confident ever. Mm. Um, but I wasn't too mad because I enjoy actually driving this car. Right, it's a good <laughs> driving car. Yeah, uh, but it's good to see that it has improved. I love the auto lane change. Yes. That is like the nicest feature and it's immediate, it's snappy. The graphics are very transparent as to what it's doing. Imagine if they had a thing where you could tap it multiple times and it'd be like Dallas where you like cross five lanes. <laughs> <laughs> So, Tymon, you're not uh, you're not always impressed by the cars that we review. What is your opinion of the i4 M50? Um, as a driver's car for an EV, it's good. Um, the throttle, like hard acceleration, is a bit too much. Uh, and you mean it has too much power, or no, what? No, not. It just so abrupt. There's the mapping for it isn't properly done. Right. So it kind of it's got a little bit of drivetrain lash where you hit it and it's like bam. And it should ramp a little bit. Driver assistance, it seems to be doing very well. I agree, 100%. Yeah, I'd take this on a road trip. Oh, easily. And, you know, it charges at 200, what was the the most you saw? Uh, I think 207. 207 kilowatt yeah. peak, and it's a pretty good curve. Pretty decent, yeah. It's just about an hour and zero to full. We have a charging video either up or coming on this car, so keep an eye out for that. Quiet, smooth, uh, the most aggressive suspension change, changing modes I've ever felt in any car. <laughs> Between uh, comfort and sport and all yep. So really all this car has is the cameras up here, a radar up front, and then some ultrasonics around it. Yeah. And, and it's doing a great job. And it's a little bit more traffic than we typically uh, have when we're doing these challenges. Uh, but that makes it harder. And I would say we haven't even subtracted one point yet. Not yet. It's been like, for me, I feel like, oh, you must be driving. It's not doing the super twitchy wheel thing that some of the other vehicles do. Sure. Um, like some cars, you know, don't make you very confident in the system, and I'm almost more hyper aware when it's on, versus now I'm pretty relaxed. I mean, it's tracking dead straight, no meandering. Like, remember the Blue Cruise was yeah. doing this everywhere? This system, BMW system, is dead straight, very smooth, really good under braking too because we used it the whole way here just to kind of evaluate the system before we shot this. And Timon and I were coming up on stopped cars at stopped lights, which is a really tough thing uh, for cars to do. This is a, a pretty extreme corner, so I'm hopping in the right lane because the right lane actually expands into an exit, which is really tough. And it stopped perfectly for the car in front of us. Yeah. It was impressed. So let's see what happens here because this is, I would say, one of the hardest parts of this whole challenge. It's hugging the left side. Wow. Hugging the left side. That's Whoa! That's the best, I think, maybe any car's done right there. <laughs> that was I mean, the, really good. The Teslas do really well in this test, and I think it's interesting. I mentioned this in my review, too. Just like, it's an intriguing alternative to a Tesla, and 
I feel like you know, interior quality is just immediately a huge step above. Granted, this is a bit more money-wise. It's a bit more money than a Model 3 Performance. You do give up some performance, yep. I would say. Model 3 Performance probably shreds a bit harder. Yeah. Where I'm doing that video, I don't know, again, when things go up or down, but I haven't shot it right now. And I would still, I think I would probably take this. It's just such a nicer place to be. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Not the smoothest car in this trip, <laughs> even in comfort suspension. By the way, rear airbags. Rear air, yep. What's up with that? That's cool. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> so just rear air, but the front no air. Nope. I heard it load level when I was filming with it earlier, and I was like, what? Yeah. Did not expect it. Let's hop in the left lane, or middle lane, I should say. Auto lane change, even on this broken surface. Yeah, I was going to say they're doing some construction, it seems. Yeah, this is a little bit different. Okay, not the smoothest corner because you can see it gave a little bit too much early on. Yeah. That's always tough because um, the sun's actually not at it, but just decreasing elevation with a harder turn. Yeah. Yeah, you never know with the decreasing radius corners. I mean, it's some of them will do the radius properly. Some of them will kind of ping pong along the edge and still keep you within the lanes technically. Mm -hmm. But this one does it really pretty well. Totally agree. Wow, have we deducted any points yet? Nope. This Holy is like smokes. the longest any car has gone. What, what was our starting point? Total? Uh, 28. Oh. This is. This could game. win it. <laughs> this could win it. What's it going to do here? How is it doing this? Wow. It's a little tiny twitch, but like nothing. Yeah. Granted, in you know, Colorado, we don't have the law that requires the dotted lines along exits or on ramps. Right, but maybe we should explain why we're so impressed with those. Because in states like Virginia and many others, when an exit meets a motorway, there's dotted lines, so the car knows where to yeah. stay. Versus this doesn't. Now, granted, these lanes are paved in such a way where there is somewhat of a line. It's just not the white official line. Uh, it's the natural line between sections pavement of pavement. Pavement breaks, yeah. yeah. And uh, this seems to be reading those just fine, so that maybe helps it. I'm really kind of shocked. Yeah, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I was like looking forward to ripping it apart because my memory of this was rough. <laughs> I can't remember what was the last car we had with this. We had the 440i, but that didn't have it. Yeah. We had a 330e, the plug-in hybrid, I think, and we also had the X5 45e. Yep. That's a great car. I'll be looking forward to getting the iX because yes. that would be interesting. I feel like uh, BMW is starting to come back a little bit. They are, yeah. They were in some dark ages for a bit. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it got really rough the last few years where their plug-in hybrids weren't amazing. Yep. They had no electrification strategy. Oh, I'm going to take a point from that. Oh. It, <laughs> it like was going straight and then at the last second went right. Didn't touch a line, but that was not confidence inspiring. Yep. And some cars do that section perfectly. That's and the sun's kind of overhead, but not even bad. I mean, it's middle of the day, so yeah. not anything abnormal. It's not like it's evening time when the sun's right at us. Yeah. There's actually times where they will like shut down the highway briefly if the sun is exactly in line with the sun. Oh, the really? Hills. Yeah. I did not know That's that. That's something that will do. How about that? So they shut it down for snow. This is why I try not to, I don't, I don't come to Denver. I try to avoid all of this. Yeah, you're like, take me to Wyoming. No, yep. <laughs> Wyoming's my place. Now here there's no markings on the left side and it's still following the lane perfectly. Yeah, so it's, I wonder if it's, whoa. oh. Whoa, uh, no one's behind us, but it just shut off. It's still going by the way, I'm just letting it go. <laughs> and it hasn't locked itself back in. Now we're going, now it's back on. Now it's a two lane switch. So I did that on purpose just because no one was around just to let the system go. Yeah. Wow. So, so when it messes up, it really so messes it up. So disengaged without warning there, basically? It disengaged and then there was a ding after, but I'm going to give that a minus three. Yeah. And it caught itself at the end and then now I've auto lane changed us back yeah. to the correct lane. So it did, yeah, two lane. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> So just like gave up on life for a second. Okay, then. it's not perfect, but no, like. <laughs> that's like that like is dangerously bad. Yeah. Though. Why do systems do that? See, Tesla's got it right because the car will scream at you, ding at you, do everything it can, but it still tries to stay in the lane. Yeah. Uh, this would just like totally gave up. What I was about to say when it did that was, I wonder if it's using logic of like, okay, I have one line, so we'll just track that one line instead. But I think yes. it was kind of 
looking at both, didn't see the other one, so it's like, oh, I'll go look for another one now. <laughs> yep, I don't really know what was going on there, but nothing good, that's for sure. Getting real close to the right side, but it didn't touch the line, we're good. Let's see if it drops to 55 here. I think we have all the settings set to do that. And speed limit 55. Flash it. Uh, Braking for the truck. Braking for the truck. Nope, speed Didn't limit's still it. set at 65. I'm gonna say it does not have speed limit assistance. Come on, speed up, let's go. Yep, yeah, I don't think it does. There it goes. Nice gradual speed up. Well, it's better than the Rivian. And what, for whatever reason, on the new software, I drove the Rivian uh, down to Salida the mm -hmm. other day. When you put it on adaptive cruise and someone gets out of your way, it is the slowest accelerating thing I've ever experienced. Really? Does this yes. one speed up if you have your turn signal on? Yes, it does the overtaking maneuver. Nice. Only on the left-hand side, I believe. That should be a criteria. Maybe we get to in the weeds there. Yeah. But basically what Timon's asking is a lot of cars, when you put your left turn signal on to pass, you know, naturally you would speed up even in your lane yep. before it would initiate a lane change. This does that. It's like the Rivian waits till there's absolutely no. Right, you have to like you have the way to drive it is like big steering input, get the view out of everything, and then it'll speed up. Tesla's the same way, unless you have FSD. Yep. Which is a waste of money. It totally is. <laughs> but now actually enhanced <laughs> autopilot's back. That's Six awesome. grand. Yeah, yeah, still a waste of money. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Shouldn't trust the system. Now we're getting to the spicier bits. Right, so as the driving continues, it gets harder and harder. And so let's see how it does. Now what's interesting is the last test we just ran was the F-150 Lightning. And it did really well on the way out. Yeah. And really badly on the way back. Yeah. And I can't, I don't have an answer as to why. Uh, yeah, it's it's such a dynamic test. I mean, there's traffic conditions and even the sun placement, which really, like you said, shouldn't affect it that much if it's this far overhead us. But yep. Who knows? There's a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> and Maserati Ghibli Q4. <laughs> uh, it's like the worst one you can buy. I don't even feel bad about shaving them. Maserati, please never send us a car to review, unless it's the MC20. Then, 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 then yeah. Yeah, yeah but any of those, my goodness, they are just terrible. I want to do MC20 versus Amira. Pretty yeah. You don't want to spend three times as much. <laughs> yeah, Amira seems to be the answer. But we got to do that comparison. Yep. Real hard. This is consumer advice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like how the weather says 11%. Chance of rain. Chance of rain, yeah. yeah. The whole iDrive 8 is really great. I have a couple issues, like the climate control. Why do I have to go on the screen for that? Yeah. Give me some hard buttons back. I missed the 1 through 8. They took away all the hard buttons. Yeah. It's kind of annoying. This all right. Is... This, let's see what happens here. Oh, going a little wide. Touches the line. Yep. That's a minus 1. Pretty good. Like, but we're safe, but it touched the line. It felt... So it didn't have any confusion mid-corner, yeah. though. All right, we're all in position to take over for the yeah. big boy here. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure the mirrors. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Whoa, big steering input. Getting wide. Did it touch? Nope. Nope. Not yet. Okay, it did it. Wow. Not, like, totally confident inspiring, but did it. Did it. All right, let's see if it takes our exit for us. Now, we don't... We do subtract points if it takes our natural exit, yeah. but it is it's convenient. convenient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it can't do hard corners, so that's a, oh, and it dinged after and shut off. So that's what, a minus? Minus two. Minus two. But I would say it went over the line, which would First, be a minus yeah. one, then shut off. Yeah. We're giving that a minus three, sorry. Yeah. But that, yep. like, it should be programmed to do harder corners. Yeah, so seems it's, to be it's like a, a steering it's angle a radius limit. limit, which the Golf R had the same issue. The Golf R, had, the Germans have this radius <laughs> limit. <laughs> Wonder so. what the tighter turns are in Germany. We should measure yeah. that. <laughs> well, they, they get pretty tight. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. So some cars have like a steering torque limit. This is definitely radius limited. Yeah. Here's our exit. Let's All right, see. let's see if it takes the right for us. Oh, it was trying to. Oh. Nope. nope. I just kept thinking. But yeah. Okay. All well, good. Yeah. Very nice. So interesting performance. Uh, way better than I thought. But when it messes up, my goodness, that yeah. is sketchy. Yeah. This was sitting back here. I didn't know what was going on. I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. I was monitoring. I wanted to let it mess up. Yeah. So that our viewers don't have to. But I can't also really see behind me in this. So. Right. Yeah. Not the best. Uh... Yeah. I'm six one, and my head touches the ceiling and I'm sitting at a slant. 
Yeah, not the best back seat room. Model 3 does win out on that. Really? Sure. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Pretty small in the back, yeah. And the battery's pretty high up in the floor. Yeah, and you have this geared, or the, not the geared. Yeah, the no. center hub. <laughs> because it's, this is a combustion chassis yeah. adapted as yeah. a battery electric vehicle. And they did a really good job. They did. That was the point of my review. I called it to bespoke or not. And half the people understood the Shakespeare yeah, no reference. One, I, I didn't, didn't get that. <laughs> All right, let's rip it. All right, on the brakes. Send it in. School buses. Have fun going to school. Full send. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll just duck in behind this guy. DSC back on comfort mode engaged. Sport mode might do better, actually. But we run everything in, in like normal mode. Yeah. So what you would do Got to go back down to the speed limit. I love that there's a speed limiting function. Oh, I, I'm always confused as to which buttons to hit here. This one toggles between active steering and adaptive cruise control. This one just sets the limit so you can't go past a certain speed, yep. which is very common on Euro cars, but we don't typically get them on the US specs. Yep. So thank you, BMW. I love limits. Big pothole, doesn't avoid those. And with yeah, these nothing, 20s. Ah. Nothing really does, yeah. Let's see what happens here because this is going to be maybe another radius limitation. And no one's to our left. Yeah, it, like, look, the wheel just gets locked and yeah. it, it flashes and then dings and then shuts off. Same so, same thing. minus yeah. three. Sorry, but that's dangerous. You're going to end up with a negative 50 on this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going back to the right lane here. This is the hardest corner of the whole thing coming up because. Um, it actually loses the left lines and it's a hard right hand turn. And people are slowing down for it even without driver assistance. All right, let's see what happens here. No one's to our left and, oh, does it, what? does it. Why? It's doing it. How did it do that? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> it did that perfectly. That's why we test it. You just right. never tell. Auto lane change, cutting off a car, typical BMW style, it did it. Are you sure you're using your turn signal? Yeah, yeah they well, make we, you do that. Yeah, they make us use the turn signals, but we have to follow the speed limits. Imagine for this if there thing. was a way to hack it to where you could lane change without the. Here's our speed thing. Again, oh. minus three. Sorry. I'm just. Yep. Because it, it shuts off and it hits the line, so it buzzes the steering wheel when you hit it. Hmm. But it knows my hands aren't on the wheel because it's capacitive That's and it should know that. Logic, yeah. It should be instant ding, beep, 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 freaking out. Again, the use case of this system is uh, to assist you with driving, right? It's designed to have your hands on the wheel and you working with the car. Yep. But I still feel like that radius limit, I get why it's there. It's because if the, if the system messes up, yeah. BMW doesn't want this massive steering input from a confused system that could fling you off the yep. road. And so it's for safety because they don't have the technology, I guess, to yeah, feel then comfortable. Then it just you off to the other side. Then it, the road. it has, again, again, the side effects are almost worse than what they're trying to stop from happening. Yeah, and I wonder if they're trying to do the logic for so many different roads because highways, the radius and the, the speed back limit to 65. has to be a certain amount. And like this car can handle it at this speed. It's not oh, speed. Yeah. This car can shred hard. Yeah, I mean, semis are meant to make these corners at this speed, so the system's just a little. This guy in the Dodge Dually. Look at the fat tires on that thing. He is wide open throttle. And are we going to hit our limit here? It like gives an initial big input yeah. and then backs off to that radius limit. That's weird. It's very odd in the tight stuff. But here's the thing. We do this test in the mountains of Colorado. And for sure, if you live in New York, Maryland, Kansas, anywhere where you're kind of just cruising, this is going to be perfect. It'll be perfect. We just tested in the hardest part just to see what it does at its limits. Right. And we also chose this stretch of road because some systems require mapped yeah. highways and it's a mapped highway for uh, Rivian's Driver Plus, Ford's Blue Cruise, GM Super Cruise. Yep. We got to run Super Cruise in this. Yeah. That's the last one that I think people are really looking forward to seeing. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, call me impressed with BMW's system. It's uh, tuned wonderfully for straight roads. No meandering, just goes. Yeah, there's a lot of systems I wouldn't even run in Kansas because it would just get annoying. <laughs> right, absolutely. Well, so far so good. So far so good. And these these are long clips, of course, so we just just sitting in the car with us. But should we talk maybe a little bit about the i4's options? 
Because this thing has everything. Yeah, it, it is a bit. Where's the uh, list of everything? Oh, I think right here. Yeah, so walk us through every option on this because it is kind of crazy. Well, this beautiful white metallic paint is 500. Is it mineral white? Mineral white. Should be alpine white, typical. Yeah, but there's no metallic flake in alpine white. Right. Yeah, so yeah. metallic spatter. No, it's hard to match metallic after an accident. Uh, what do you think of the cognac that is included? For the cognac? Yep. I don't like the leather quality. Is it for Nasca leather? Is that what they say? It doesn't say. Uh, yeah. Just, oh, Sensatec. Sensatec, yeah. So it's it's animal free. Yep. Which is nice. Yep. But the quality feels pretty plasticky. Yeah. It's... And they like put this leather like grain in it, but it's almost too much. I'd rather not have the grain. I'd rather it be more like a Tesla seat. Right. It needs to be more fine grain or no grain. Yeah. Uh, like you said, driver assistance pro package, seventeen hundred. Shadow line package, another four hundred bucks. That's worth every penny. That's all the black <laughs> accents everywhere. Yeah, looks good. Parking assistance package, seven hundred. Best feature of the parking assistance package is the backup assistant. That is cool. We when we if you guys are curious about that, watch our be just type in BMW three hundred and thirty E out of spec. We did a whole review time and I remember we set up an obstacle course for it. It actually did pretty well. And it, it just follows the last like, uh, I don't know, 40 feet or 100 feet something of your driving. It's awesome. And it just reverses everything. It's funny that they mentioned rear view camera as part of that package, even though that's federally mandated. And federally it become, mandated. It become anyways. <laughs> so they say it's part of an optional package? Yep. Are you sure it's not parking sensors? Uh, it just says rear view camera. Rear view camera. camera. To the right to see standard features. It could be in there. Yeah, it probably is. Hmm. Should be. That's weird. <laughs> um, premium package. That's your heated wheel, lumbar support, heated seats, and ambient lighting. Pretty good seats ambient are lighting. not good though. No. High performance package. That's the M technology 20 inch M wheels. Yep. That's not worth it. So you get wheels and the little fender flares on the back. Yeah. And software. Yeah. But not to increase the power, just like as a lap timer. Yeah, not worth 25. Because if it gave you the big brakes, that would be great, but those come standard in the M50. Yep. Not uh, worth it. Icon adaptive LED with laser light. Yeah, laser headlights, hell yeah. And adaptive driving beam will now be available in the US, so hopefully they can software update it to do all the matrix stuff. Yeah, uh, that's gonna cost an extra five hundred dollars. Worth every penny. <laughs> but we but that time it's just speculating. We don't know the price. Yeah. Uh, wireless device charger, two hundred dollars. Sorry, people. Uh, $200 for a wireless phone charger. What? That's a huge... And if I remember correctly, you you, you lose a USB-C port when you get the wireless charger. Oh, I don't know if that's yeah. true, but I feel like I remember that from somewhere. 300 bucks for the eSIM for 5G. That's not worth it. Um, the curved display with HUD as a display, 1000 bucks. So $1,000 for this display. Yeah, worth it. What else would you get? I don't know. I, I've only ever seen this yeah. display. <laughs> Carmen Carden Surround, 875 Every penny worth it. Yeah, that's a that pretty good price. That sound system is awesome. That's I said the same thing. It's such a good value. Yep. Yeah. HK, go for it. Yep, that's, that's it. That's the it. So, okay. so the total price... $77,000 all in. I think that's very reasonable. Yeah, I agree. And you get $7,500 off, and you get $2,500 in Colorado off, and you get two years of free EA charging. So that brings it down to monthly performance money, at least in Colorado. Right, when you take this car and factor the credits, it's the same price as a Model 3 performance, which doesn't qualify for the credits. Yeah. It does qualify for our state credit, though. Yep. Yeah. Wow, pretty uneventful uh, road trip back so far. Just cruising. I just got my hand touching the wheel. I mean, <laughs> this is the way it should be. Every, yeah. every hog back should just be, okay, it did it. Yep. But the reason we do this is to show there are some big flaws with the system, such as it randomly shutting off mid-corner. Yeah, eventually we'll get to the point where most cars will do this, but there's, there'll still be issues with some cars, I think. But I mean, yeah, distant future, where we'll have to find a more aggressive road. Yeah. We'll so, see which car can take us around the Nürburgring hands-free the best. Right. <laughs> so what's interesting is this car also has adaptive distance that it can do automatically. Mm -hmm. So there's, let's just say one, two, three, four, four different distances you can choose from. And it says based on the driving scenario, you can have it choose what distance is best. That's kind of cool. Yeah. BMW's got a lot of cool tech. Also, you can program it to roll your window down based on GPS location. Yeah. <laughs> which is a real nifty feature, I have to say. Starbucks. 
Yeah. <laughs> just any Starbucks. You drive by and yes, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a mining machine. Oversized load coming into our lane with traffic on the left. What's it going to do? Mine is a Volvo truck. Right I there. think it's just ignoring the truck. <laughs> <laughs> but it did it well. No input from me. Lane change to the right. Love how immediately it hits the lane change, and I love that I can just click the signal once really quick. Some you gotta go all the way up or hold. This is just a knock and right over. Yep. Interesting, we're down to 19% state of charge, and it's still showing 100% power available. That's good. Yep. You've run this down to zero, though. Yep. How did it feel down very low? Very, very, very low is when it starts feeling like, okay, running out of power. But okay. it lets you go pretty low. Not that, like Volvo. Yeah, that's a very German <laughs> thing. It's like you try and retain performance down to very low single-digit state of charge. The Swedes are like, oh, 10%? You better plug the sucker in right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Volvo pack strategy, I just don't like it. Letting you use like all of it. Well, this has almost no buffer too. Yeah, it's true. Three kilowatt hour buffer from gross to usable mm. on an 89 kilowatt hour pack. Pretty good. 89 gross, 86 usable, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Is that what you said, Tybin? 81 usable, 83.3 oh. something. Oh, so 80s somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. We should probably know these things before we review a car. <laughs> But this is just the this driver assistance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just providing extra commentary to get you through the end of this video, which I know is not helping. <laughs> Love the capacitive wheel. Yeah, I hope more cars do that route. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think they should expand their eye tracking because let's just do a quick little test. Time in, you watch the road ahead. Uh, right. I'll look this way. No warnings, right? We're coming up on a turn. Yeah, but no warnings? No, no. See. Yeah, it should be like immediately like, dude, stop looking over there. It's got the tech for it. Someone named Gus is driving by in their Model Y. Gus. Drink it, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to drive this thing across the country. So I haven't charged it yet. You did all that when you had it. Yeah, it charged great. Although, yeah, it doesn't show you anything on the display, really. Oh, that's the same with an i3, so it doesn't show you charging power? Nope. You know what is funny about this car, speaking of charging, if I go into the menu for settings, and I go driving settings, and I go charging, and then I go all the way to the right, there's a fan loudness setting. That's a cool feature. We touched on this in our review. Yeah. But, for example, some cars when you DC fast charge, or especially level two charge in a hot environment, will run the cooling fans. You can just shut the cooling fans off on this, and it will just derate charging. Charge slower. Yeah, charge slower to, to reduce fan loudness. I have it unrestricted because I like the fastest charging with all the fans. Well, that's an interesting approach, yeah. Yeah. Never seen that before. I think it's really quite neat. There's also, you know, charging target. The MW recommends charging this car to 80% every day, as would I. I would say, you know, set it low for, for trips and everything like this. So you can just come down. See, it says the vehicle charges the fastest up to 80%. This is optimal for the battery life and the fastest charging route. Yep. Okay. So we'll go to 80. But since it's not our car and we have to do range testing tonight, hundo. Yep. You can yeah. also set your AC limit down very quickly, you know, easily to, uh, you know, six amps all the way in single digit increments up to 20. And then you can go from 20 to 32 to 48. It's just nice to have all of the options. I just think BMW finally got it right with this car yeah and and maybe it was okay that they waited because this is a, a i think a worthy successor to the i3 and i was surprised they did it on a non-bespoke platform but the ix of course is bespoke. the ix is interesting because it's the only car that will ever be built on that platform really they engineered an entire ground up platform for one really ugly SUV. Yeah, <laughs> it looks better in person, but still not great. It's a bit awkward in person, as, and it shouldn't be. But like, look at the X3 taillights. Those are terrible. What is BMW doing? See, what do they do? Because the grille is such an iconic piece of their design language. What happens when they go EVs with no need for a grill? Well, just keep it like older grills. Nice, smaller. Yeah. classy, kidney <laughs> grills. Bigger. Yeah. <laughs> And now we're, we don't have angel eyes anymore. We have all these angles in the headlights and taillights. Angel eyes were so cool. I just miss early 2000s BMW. Yeah, that was what it peaked. And honestly, you know what's looking good again are the Bengal Butt 7 Series. 
<laughs> I saw a 760 of the Bengal Butt era, the LCI, so it had the LEDs, taillights. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that looks hot. Blue on tan, yep. full Florida spec. It's good. It was nice, and it was mint. No cooled seats in this thing? No cooled seats, unfortunately. Needs cooled seats. Yeah. On hot days, it was 100 degrees up where we were. Yeah, that's right. But, like, nothing to speak of from a driver assistant. So this competent. Is, yeah, so far the best. Is it the best we've ever tested? Yep. I, I would say... I feel like it's, I'm the most confident in it of all the cars. Yeah, until it just tries to chop your head yeah. off. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Whoa, actually went hard left for a second, but it did it. Wow. No points deducted. And then we take our exit, regen down. I have it in B mode, which is one pedal drive mode. I keep it in B all the time. Yep. Wow. That's really good. The end of the hog back for the i4 M50. I keep wanting to say M50i, you can't say i. I know, you did our early first drive a bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't call like, it the i. It. <laughs> um, so, what's the final score? 10. Really? Yeah. Which wow. Which just edged over a Model 3 performance. So it beat the Tesla? Yep. No way! Yep. That's, that's a headline, because everyone, <laughs> everyone is convinced Autopilot is the best. And I agree, it is fantastic and it excels in most cases that most cars But there's things with. that this does. It has the eye tracking, it has the capacitive. Yep. Although, again, I don't really feel like we should give it points for the eye tracking because we're going to, but because you, you can only use it on traffic in the highway, we don't really get. Yeah. I mean, you get traffic down closer to Denver, but where I live, we don't have traffic. Yeah. So that's one of those things. I mean, it, it was, you could almost say nearest makes no difference points wise because the Tesla just doesn't have a capacitive wheel. If it did, that would have given it the points to beat this. Like it's six in one hand, half a dozen. Okay, so aside from the, the input stuff, the system itself was very comparable. But even that, yeah. this is on par with Tesla. Yeah, it really is. Whoa. And that's why we do these challenges. Yep. I will say Tesla, to me, I think is safer. I agree. I feel probably the safest, and it tells you the most. It's when this messes up is when you really freak out. <laughs> right, and this messed up twice really badly. Uh, but I mean, honestly, how much can we? Yeah, it's just like good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> wow. So this is on par. Well, technically, beat Tesla in our test. Yep. Wow. How about that? That's insane. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. Thanks for joining us on a drive in the BMW i4 M50. Love it. Love this car. Wow. If I was in the market for another vehicle, which to. I'm not and at the moment because I bought too many, <laughs> uh, this would be very high on the list. It needs track mode. Yeah, it needs track mode, but it's got boost mode. We should take it to the track and see how it does. The one thing that I think I, I, I know we're trying to end this video, but the one thing that kind of bugs me is the materials don't feed, like the leather quality doesn't feel that nice. It appears premium. If they put this drivetrain in like a 550, mm -hmm. like an M550 electric, that'd be me all day. Sold. Yeah, make it faster than the M5. <laughs> I would be into that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one very soon, as in tomorrow, because we do daily videos on the <laughs> channel. Bye-bye. <laughs> We actually got the car over in traffic to test the eye tracking and it says assistance plus ready and then it'll pop up that says note requirements or something like that. Here we go. Note requirements, mode, assist plus. There we are. Stay attentive. Ah, now we're in. Now look away. Wait, now it's like everything's green. Okay, I'm going to look away. Ready? Not doing anything. Oh, stay attentive. Stay attentive. Looking forwards. Oh, grab wheel. Okay. Knock me out. <laughs> but that's pretty cool. So I guess if I could just look forwards, then it would just let me do this. So we're playing around with the system a little bit more and it popped up. I, I blocked it because I wanted to take a picture of it and it said malfunction. But now we're good. It's letting this guy merge. We're getting full BMW New Jersey style. Good thing we have Jersey plates on this. It's very fitting. And it's, whoa, not good. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Sometimes it's not good. Do you, it says, if you drink, don't drive. DUI enforcement is on. We're going to be caught in about five minutes if it keeps driving like that. <laughs> that was not good. So we have you have to wait for it to prompt. Then you hit mode. These go green. And now we're locked back in. Let's just see what happens. Everything's green here in the instrument cluster for the roadway. And...
stay attentive. I am. I'm even. Look, I'm I'm attentive, and now it's locked me out. What the heck? Could it be because you're wearing glasses? Yeah, let's try it without. And do, maybe I need to move the wheel up so I can see my face a little bit better. I'll go full up on the wheel, locking in assist plus, no glasses. I do have squinty eyes, so eyes wide open looking forwards. Now it seems to be working. What happens if it goes more than 40? Oh, it says take over, assist plus off. If I dip back to 40. Yeah, we have to get off here, I guess. That's okay, we're testing. So I've dipped back under 40, and it's not prompting me to go back in. Anyway, there you go. There's our very poor attempt of a review of Assist Driving Assist Plus. Didn't seem to work very well in my three minutes with it, but that is literally the most amount of traffic I ever set in around here. So I hope someone does a good review of this system in like New York traffic or something. Thank <laughs> you.